what I've done here is I've taken a fourth of the dough that I would normally make a 16 inch pizza with and I've sectioned it into fourths so I can make these uh, hot bread type of sandwiches. And I'm going to start with this. So the next step here is to flatten this out into a rectangular flat bread size piece. And there you have it. Now right there, really the key to this is imperfection. I mean, as far as really an authentic look into how it bakes and, and looks at the final product, it's really key right here with the shape that you go with, okay? Now the next step that I want to do is I want to fill it with a spread. Now this is a filler that I've made from scratch. I've got it right here. Now what this consists of is mostly fresh vegetables that I whipped up, uh, mushrooms, tomatoes, uh, zucchini, uh, I had some green onion chopped up in there, some green olives, and what I did with that is I made a roux on the stove, added a little cream, then tossed the fresh vegetables in with that just to make this spread. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill it down here just off, to, off from the center a little bit, about three quarters of the way down the middle, and we'll go from there. And there we have the filler laid down there just nice. If you notice, it's not exactly a huge amount. Like I said, it's a spread, so you just kind of want to fill it just a little layer there before you start putting in the meats and cheeses and whatnot. And that's the next step here is, is I'm going to go with some mozzarella cheese, and I'm going with some shredded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump it all in here on the top, and then I'm going to lay down the meat, which covers all of it, and then I'm going to roll up kind of like a sushi roll, starting from this end all the way to the top, and then we'll bake it. As you can see here, I've laid down the mozzarella. It doesn't take a whole lot. I mean, of course, it's going to be to your own personal taste and what you want for yourself. But this mozzarella is grated pretty thick, so it's going to go a long ways when it's melted. And it's going to help bond the breading, which is, you know, in a sense, actually a pizza dough. And it'll bond that with the meat and make it all stick together just a little bit better. So that's what you really want is a sandwich that's not pulling apart. Next, I'm going to lay in the meat, and I'm choosing turkey, and I'm going to put in about six pieces. This six pieces are round, so we'll cover from one end to the other, and we'll go from there. Now, the trick to that meat, really, is you don't want to put it too much towards the top. But when I say the top, I mean this far side over here, because I'm going to roll it from here to the back direction here towards the wall. So I'm going to roll it just like sushi, I guess. And as you see here, I've actually put in uh, some condiments here. I like a little mayonnaise. I like a little mustard. And I put that right down the center, too. I don't want it oozing that all over the place by putting it up here at the top. When you roll it all up, you'll see that it gets all layered with these three different items that I put in there between the spread, the meat, and the condiments that I've chosen for my own taste. And if you like, you can add in anything else you'd like, you know, as far as your own personal items and what you want to do in there. I've stayed and steered away from lettuce particularly because I like my lettuce cold. And when it's baked and it comes out, I think it might throw it off a little bit. But that's my personal reference. Anyway, um, let's get rolling it up. And there you have it. It's all rolled up, nice and tight. Now, I've found that I want to make sure that I put the meat in the right place, like I said, because when you roll it up, it seems to push out here across this top ridge here on the sandwich. And when that happens, it seems like when it bakes, it doesn't connect and bond like it normally would with the cheese and whatnot. And it just opens itself up and ends up being a big mess when you're done. So what I like to even do at this point to make sure it doesn't happen is I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to put the toothpick right here on that edge to make sure it doesn't rise too much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up here and I'm going to place it on the pan. We're going to bake it at 450 degrees. It only takes about 8 minutes, maybe 10 depending on your climate. And we'll go from there. All right, here we are. I already got the uh, oven set around 450. I've got it on this pan. I slipped up the pan with a little olive oil to make sure it doesn't stick. I'm going to go ahead and throw that bad boy in now. About 8 to 10 minutes. Okay, let's see what we've got here. It's about time to check on it. We've done about 8 minutes. Now, let it see the light. Looks pretty good. It's got some good color. It's 
is not pretty good. You can hear it sizzling. And it was a good thing. Looks like that we put that toothpick in there. It helped it hold together. And uh, I'm going to let it cool off just a little bit. And then I'm going to cut it out in half and serve it up. All right, here we go. I just cut it in half. Let's separate it and check that out. Nice cheese going in there. Oh yeah, rolled up real nice. Ready to serve. <laughs> That's the good. That's what you want. That's how you want it. And believe you me, this is delish. And uh, as far as the pizza crust goes, if you don't already have a recipe, they're online everywhere. Just I picked a, a New York style recipe. And uh, as far as the filler goes, you can really just use just about anything. But if you've got any questions about it, go ahead and ask and I'll let you know. And there you have it.